directors have a five-year term. Well, when he left, they had an acting commissioner that took his place, which tells me that he left before his term was up. Question. Yes. Um, how, how does it work if you are, if you were in Congress representing the Republic of Texas, uh, and is Congress not a corporation or a number of persons representing the corporation? Actually. How, how does that work? Okay, it, it goes back, and I've seen court cases that talk about this, okay? Because it goes back to a, a common law corporation, okay? And, and a government, okay, at common law is the people. That's why it's called of the people, by the people, and for the people, right? And so if you read these old court cases, I've seen court cases that I've read back in like the 1700s that talked about it where, where uh, late 1700s, right, after the War of Independence. Anyways, um, where the court would say that, that you can't sue the government because, because the people are the government. And, and it's like suing yourself. You see what I'm saying? You can't sue yourself. And so, so that's why you can't sue the governments, because like suing yourself. But now you can sue the government because it's just a corporation. It's not suing yourself anymore. You see what I'm saying? Because we're not the government anymore. You see what I'm saying? Or at least we're not that government. We're, our government is here, and, and all we have to do is start operating it. But, but we're not that government. Okay, that so, government is not us. Okay, so when you refer to Congress, are you referring to the, the Congress, by the people, for the people? When I was Speaker of the House of Representatives, that's the de jure entity that I was Speaker of. So again, I but, couldn't sue that government because that's the people. It's like suing myself. Okay, so it's not the Congress that we typically um, no. know, right? That's right. Okay. So it's, okay. Are you saying, Glenn, that the Republic of Texas is not registered on the, with the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission? Absolutely not. Okay, there, there that's it. Good. Because every, every department of the United States is listed on the United States Securities Exchange Commission as a corporation, separate and individual. You can find cities, municipalities, the they're office all of the Attorney General, they're all corporations. They're all for profit businesses. Yeah. And they're all bankrupt. Okay. Uh, and just one other thing, you pointed out earlier that there is a du jour um, government, I guess, yes. in, in BC. Here. So that would be in addition to the Republic of Texas then, correct? Sorry? That would be in addition to the Republic of Texas. Well, Texas only covers up into Wyoming, right? So it doesn't come up here. No, but you, you, you said that, uh, as far as you know, that the Republic of Texas is the only de jure government. Well, that's true. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, but it's not being operated, okay? It's sitting here dormant, waiting for somebody to operate it. Well, it's my understanding that they are operating it's only one in, in the Shushua. I think it's the Shushua, First Nations. Yeah. I wasn't, uh, wasn't aware of that, it's but uh, maybe that's possible. Yeah. That's possible, yes. I guess we understand that concept earlier that our rights are unalienable and they most certainly cannot be taken by a corporation, right? So the fact of the matter is, is that there's a de jure government that's dormant on the whole planet. We just got to remember who we are and step up. That's right, exactly. So, okay. Step up to the plate and accept responsibility. Here's the de jure government right here. Everyone listen to on Me? CBC, they have an awesome documentary on it. It's called The Origin of Republics. Texas, Texas, the Republic of Texas is just one public, and there's, there's many, many publics. Oh, yeah. That's why they call pubs, pubs. And we should because reinstate ours. Sorry? We should reinstate ours. We should just start operating it. That's right. It's okay. Physical, it's physically impossible for a limited entity to take over the capacity of unlimited entities. You understand? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If they haven't taken over what we've stopped doing, they just start something different. Right. That's and what we fall looks like. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving on here. Because we are under martial law, <coughs> if you are already under attack, it becomes very <coughs> difficult to de deal with, and it gets more difficult the further along you are in the process. It's much easier if you attack them before they ever see you. Much, much easier. 
they have been good teachers for me because I do to them what they do to me. I grind them through my system. And once you understand what's happening, when I first did this, uh, it scared the heck out of me, quite frankly. But, but now that I've done it a whole bunch, it's, you just watch them die for cover. I presume they're guilty and make them prove they're not. I started out by filing commercial liens in 2005. I filed a $15 million commercial lien against the IRS and all the commissioners and deputy commissioners. Mark Everson resigned. I filed a $500 million commercial lien against J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and all of their executive officers. I filed a $500 million commercial lien against Wilshire Credit Corporation and all of their executive officers. I filed a billion dollar commercial lien against a law firm in Phoenix and all of their executive officers. I filed a $15 million commercial <coughs> lien against Capital One Bank and all of their executive officers. I sent numerous invoices. The United States owes me approximately two bill. The reason I'm telling you all this is that I believe commercial liens work and are valid, but you're operating in their system and they are thieves. There is no honor among thieves. I started filing criminal complaints and I saw much better results. I filed hundreds of notice and demands and dozens of criminal complaints. All the criminal complaints may be viewed at the Pinal County Recorder's website. After filing criminal complaints, I've seen numerous people resign or removed. U.S. Attorney for Arizona, two U.S. Attorneys in Texas, U.S. Attorney General Mark, uh, 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 Alberta Gonzalez, U.S. IRS Commissioner Mark Alverson, Alberta Attorney General, U.S. Congressman, U.S. Senators, U.S. Solicitor General. I've seen positive results in Ontario after filing a lawsuit within about two weeks. There was an announcement on national TV that the issue I'd brought up in the lawsuit was not to happen and would not be tolerated. This happened twice. U.S. attorneys were removed. They would never admit that it had anything to do with what you're doing. But it's amazing how it works. I've seen positive results. Alberta Gonzalez resigned less than two weeks after I filed a petition for writ to certiorari. I, I filed criminal complaints against the court clerk for addressing mail to me with a zip code and then the court disappears and all future mail comes with no zip code. With the, if you see on the letter, now now some of you new people that came in, I, I have copies of, uh, like uh, some of you uh, tables uh, have some extra copies, if you could pass them back to some of the people back there that uh, uh, are sitting back there. Anyways, there's, there's a, a copy of a letter from the U.S. Solicitor General that uh, where, where they sent it to me because I filed criminal complaints against them and, and now they don't send it to a zip code anymore. It's amazing how that works. This is a procedure that I developed over the last five years. I send a registered letter to my public servant. When my public servant violates my rights, I file a criminal complaint against him and send it to his boss. After 30 days, I make up another criminal complaint naming my public servant as his boss, as a co-conspirator, an accomplice after the fact, and send it to the next up the chain of command. After 30 days, I make up another criminal complaint and file naming the boss and my, uh, uh, my public servant as boss, as a co-conspirator, an accomplice after the fact, and their boss as boss, as a co-conspirator, an accomplice after the fact, and send it up to the next guy up the chain of command. I keep going up to the chain of command right after the President of the United States or the Queen. And I always make sure they get a copy. And I always record the criminal complaints because after 30 days it becomes public policy, which is like a regulation. Did you? No, yeah, we're just about ready to play. Okay. Uh, I just want to make an announcement that uh, I know you're good and honorable people. And one of you good and honorable people got my pen when you come in the front door. <laughs> it has uh, Bridgewater Bank on it. And so I'll be asking for that back. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I just want to announce we're going to take exactly one hour. So we're going to start here at 1.15. Now, there is a little cafeteria down there. I file these criminal complaints, and I record them. And after 30 days, uh, there are several counties in the states that you can record anything you want. Uh, the one I use is Pinal County in Arizona, and they told me, that if I want to pay the fee, they'll record a hamburger. And uh, so they'll record anything. Technically, they all have to record anything, but there's a lot of them that perjure their role. And uh, so again, we need to build a case against them and prosecute them. 
Have you ever paid with a promissory note? No. Oh. Tried. <laughs> Anyways, they stole it. <laughs> Anyways, I always record them because after 30 days it becomes public policy and, and it's like a regulation. Okay? All regulations are public policy. And, and uh, I, I've worked in aviation for 30 years and I deal with law and regulation all day, every day as far as aviation is concerned. And, and we do that. That's what we do. And, uh, and so, so I know that after 30 days it becomes public policy. And, and so it's, it's big time in their face. And then plus anybody can go there. You can actually make your own law. Okay? If there was a place here in Canada you could record stuff, I've heard you can do it at PPSA. And so, but you can actually make your own law. And, and you just tell them that none of that applies to me and I'm not going to do it. And so there. And, you know, we're the king. Do whatever you want. Personal property security. Anyways, so when I send them a notice of demand, I usually get no response at all. That means they've acquiesced. If there's something that you're saying that is not true, they have a duty to point it out. One of the first documents I sent out was to the Pinal County Recorder in Arizona. And she sent me back a short letter, said thank you for your document. It really didn't say much. But she signed it personally, and it said most respectfully. Well, that's a perfect answer in my opinion. She's acknowledging who I am. I'm the king. She's my servant. A judge in Texas sent me a certified copy of his oath of office and surety bond. <laughs> That's a perfect response too. That's like saying, I stand naked before you. <laughs> you know, really. Edmonton City Police sent me a letter acknowledging receipt. 